hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're here for the long awaited breastfeeding video and that is how to survive your first month breastfeeding your little one. I have a little guest here in the background and over here in the background I've got my dog Coda. He is such a mama's boy as well and I've got my baby who is of course a mama's boy and he's awake and just looking around right now and cooing so he might even make um, a little bit of an appearance on my lap if he is not happy. Before we hop into the video, if you guys are new here, I want to say welcome. My name is Morgan. I make a lot of this like mom style content right now on my channel because I just had a baby boy back on February 9th and I love sharing all of my personal tips and tricks as to how I'm surviving with a newborn. I'm in no way a medical professional. I'm not a professional at all. I'm just sharing with you guys like what has worked for me um, between having my daughter Kaya and now having baby boy. Um, and I've breastfed both of them. I breastfed my daughter until six weeks, until I dried up. And this time breastfeeding is going much better. So I just wanna share with you like what is working for me. All right, before we hop into our first subject on breastfeeding, I want to apologize for the background noise. All of my neighbors are out blowing the snow out of their driveways because we just got like a foot of snow over the weekend and we have another foot of snow coming in a couple of days. So everybody's panicking and trying to get their driveways cleared so that they can be prepared for the next foot of snow coming. You guys should seriously see like the snow drifts in my driveway. There are like probably 10 foot hills in my, like on the sides of my driveway. It's my driveway and then 10 foot hills of snow and then it's my neighbors. <laughs> It's crazy. Why do I live here? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so what I want to start out with is the schedule. So there are there are two schedules here that I am going to cover. The first schedule is zero to two weeks. Now during the first two weeks, you're going to let your baby kind of control when he or she wants to eat. Um, when they're hungry, they're gonna let you know. And they will typically cluster feed quite a bit during these first two weeks. Um, and that helps get your breast milk a flow in, brings your breast milk supply in, especially in the first 48 hours when they're cluster feeding um, after birth. That is signaling to your body that it needs to start um, producing actual breast milk. My biggest tip is just to make sure that if your baby is really sleepy, because newborns do get super sleepy, just make sure you're waking them every two, about two hours to feed is the general rule of hand. This is just what I have learned from various books, my various experiences with my kiddos, and from my lactation consultant and my doctor. By no means am I a medical professional. This is just what's been working for me. So generally, I would wake him up every two hours. Make sure that he was just feeding every two hours. Now, Riker did a perfect job of doing this himself for the most part because he is what I like to call a snacker. He, I had like a little bit of an oversupply issue, so when he was feeding, um, I would feed him on one side and then I would burp him and then he would refuse the other side. But instead of waiting about two hours to feed, he would wait about an hour and then he'd want the other side by that time. So Riker was eating every hour, hour and a half, this slowed down after the first week and I wasn't having to wake up every hour, hour and a half during the night. Um, he kind of stretched it out to about two, two and a half hours. And, but he was still feeding on each side. Again, I had a little bit of an oversupply issue. Once we got to his two week appointment with his pediatrician, they're going to tell you whether it's okay or not to stop waking your baby every two hours to feed during the nighttime. They want you doing that during the first two weeks because they want to get them back up to their birth weight. So my son's doctor gave us the okay that we did not need to continue um, waking him every two hours at night to feed and just to let him sleep as long as he wanted to really during the night and to feed him when he naturally woke up. Um, so typically now that he is two weeks, he'll wake up around three or four in the morning. That's the first time he'll wake up. He'll have a feeding and then he'll wake up right around like probably like six or seven ish and he'll have a feeding. I bring my daughter to preschool and then he will sleep for like a good long time. You guys today he slept until 11. I just let him do his thing. I know that this week especially he's just getting over his first mental leap which I will go into in another video. Um, I'll have information for that linked down below for you guys, but he's just getting over a leap. So he didn't wake up until 
um, closer to 11, which was really nice for me to get things done. Um, but then in that mid morning um, feeding, he will, this is his longest feeding, you guys. He will feed probably like a half hour on each side. So I wanna like step back just for a second. So last week I was struggling with um, a low supply, which was crazy because the first two weeks I had an oversupply. So I had went from an oversupply to an undersupply, if you will. <laughs> so I started to make sure he was feeding on each side during each feeding. He was no longer refusing the other breast. Um, he needed both sides to get um, the amount that he needed. And then now this like past week, everything's leveled out a little bit more. My milk supply came back up. I'll get into how I did that in just a minute here. Um, but once my milk supply got back up, he will bounce back and forth um, between like having one side at a time and having both sides at a time. It depends on how hungry he is. So during this really long mid-morning feed, he will typically feed about 30 minutes on one side. He'll burp, have his diaper changed, and then he'll feed 30 minutes on the other side. And then he'll stay awake until about 1 or 2 p.m., which right now it's at that time and he is napping. So we're right on schedule today. This is a really nice long nap that he takes. This is his second nap of the day. And he'll usually nap until about 4 or 5 p.m., right around when my husband and daughter get home. And then he will wake and he'll feed again. And usually he'll want both sides. But he won't feed for 30 minutes on each side typically about 15 minutes I'll burp and change him 15 minutes and then he will stay awake for the evening he usually wants a little bit of a snack right around 6 30 and I'll let him um, just kind of nurse and do his thing um, sometimes he wants both sides sometimes he just wants one side just a little snack <laughs> and then um, right around like 7 30 8 p.m. is when we begin their nighttime routine so this is when I switch him over into like a nighttime swaddle we do a bath for our kids every other night, um, but we always make sure that he's swaddled up nice and tight, so during the day we don't have him swaddled. We try not to have him swaddled anyways unless he's really upset, and then at nighttime we swaddle him up tight so that he just knows that, ooh, I'm swaddled, means it's nighttime, means I need to sleep longer. So, and then I will feed him, this will be another really good feeding you guys right before bed. 30 minutes, burp, and then I will change him if he's wet his diaper again, and then I will feed him on this side. He will typically sleep until like 9 30 and then he just wants to be topped off and this is the feeding sometimes that I'll let my husband take over I will let him do about an ounce to two ounces in a bottle again this is just kind of like a top off this is just kind of like a little snack that he wants he he never wants more than two ounces at this feeding he's such a goon I don't know this is where I've been using some of my Hakka pumped milk is I will let my husband give my son a bottle so that they can have that bonding experience and then he will sleep from about 10 p.m. until 3 or 4 in the morning again. And then we repeat the process. Now this isn't like a for sure set schedule. This is just a loose schedule we go off of. You know, every two or three hours we're making sure that he's eating. We're making sure that he's having more awake time during the day. And that he's just having a good um, two naps per day that are at least a couple hours long each. Um, we find that our baby does much better when he's in this schedule. Again, no, we're not perfect. No, we don't follow this schedule to the T every single day. We're not super strict on the schedule. We just find that our lives are a little easier when we do follow this schedule as closely as possible and that we tend to sleep better when we follow this schedule as, as best as possible. All right, so now that I've covered the baby and the breastfeeding schedule, um, let's get into some of your guys' questions. So the biggest question, the thing that I have the most questions on is this little guy right here, the Hakka silicone breast pump. You guys have seen me using this in many of my videos. I highly, highly recommend it. Um, I'll have this linked down below for you as well. Now, again, remember please that I am not an expert. This is just what I've been doing with um, nursing and with using this um, little device. And this is what's been working for me. First and foremost, what is this? I found this when I was pregnant with Riker and found that many mamas were using this in place of a breast pad on the opposite breast that they were nursing on. So this is going to catch your left down as the baby is feeding. So what your breast pad would typically soak up 
this is going to collect for you and you're able to store it for later. One of the biggest questions I get in regards to this is does it only catch four milk or does it catch four milk and hind milk? Typically, yes, this is only going to catch four milk because this is just going to catch your letdown. Now that is like specifically what I found off of the site. What I have personally noticed is that actually the milk that this is catching has a really decent fat content. Um, has a really good fat content. In fact, is directly comparable to what I have collected with an electrical pump. The milk that I collect is very fatty. And again, is equivalent to what I collect with an electric pump. Now, I've been trying to reach out to Haka and I've been trying to do more research on this to see if it truly is just for milk that it's catching or if, um, or if there is some kind of um, misinformation there. I will keep you guys updated on that because I'm still learning myself. So again, I will use this on the opposite side that I nurse on and it's just supposed to catch basically what your nursing pad would catch. Again, I will have all the information linked down below and you guys can go and check it out yourself and read up on it a little bit more, but this is just what I've been using it for and it's been working out super great to get a little bit of a stash in the fridge and the freezer and it works perfectly to have that milk on hand. So like if I'm running and doing errands and I just can't breastfeed him at the time that he's hungry, I can at least give him a bottle on demand and my husband is able to bond with him a little bit and give him bottles at night when he just wants to be topped off after that final nighttime nursing. So when I was doing a little bit of research last night, I actually found that there is a proper way to attach this. So typically what I would do is I would squeeze this and then I would um, attach it like this, like onto my breast, right? And then when I let go, it would stay. And um, that would apply a little bit of suction. So it would look a little bit like this I found out that you're actually supposed to um, flip this thing backwards. <laughs> you're supposed to flip this thing backwards and then you're supposed to squeeze like this and then you're supposed to place it on your breast and then you're supposed to unfold this and let it suction on. And the amount of suction it's going to apply is going to be much greater when you do it this method instead of just simply squeezing it and attaching it. Um, so it'll look more so like this when it's attached to your breast when you do it with the um, like this method, the flipping back the lip and attaching it this way. I just started doing that today and I haven't noticed like much of a difference in how much it catches but it's supposed to increase the amount that you catch with this thing. One question that I got in regards to the Haka is, is this equivalent to an electric breast pump? No, this is not equivalent to an electric breast pump. Yes, it does um, provide suction. It does like stimulate your breast. It doesn't provide the same amount of stimulation as an electrical breast pump. So, um, and another question I got is, will this do the same thing as an electric breast pump in like, in helping to increase your milk supply. No, this will not provide the amount of stimulation that your breasts need to signal to, to them to start making more milk. So again, no, this is not equivalent to, a bre to an electric breast pump, but it does catch just as much for me. When I will pump with my Spectra now, which I've just started to do this last week, when I pump with the um, Spectra electric pump, I pump just as much out of um, one breast as I will get from this in my um, letdown when I'm nursing. The next section of this video, um, I'm going to talk about increasing your milk supply if you are struggling during your first month, um, like I did. So again, I started struggling with milk supply during the third week, and to get this supply back up, there are several things that you can do. What I did first and foremost is I had oats every single day, several times a day, and I would just incorporate the oats into like a parfait, and then I upped my water. Upping those two things I think alone really helped, um, but I also started to incorporate more lactation tea or mother's milk tea. Um, there's two different kinds that I use, and that is the Stork brand for their lactation tea, and um, I don't remember what the brand is for the other one, but it's just called Mother's Milk Tea, and you can find that at Target or Walmart, and also on Amazon. I had somebody reach out to me and tell me that they had really good experience increasing their supply with fenugreek, fenugreek pills. I'm sorry if I'm totally butchering that. They said that they had really good results with those fenugreek pills. 
which I saw you can purchase those on Amazon as well. Um, I'm not going to link that one down below just because I personally haven't had any experience with it, but I have seen Fenty Greek pills on Amazon. Another thing that I started to do um, right at the end of my third week, right around my fourth week, is right after my morning feed, I would then pump. So within the first hour of um, my first morning feed, I will make sure that I pump. So this is signaling to your body to start to make more milk. And when I say pump, I was using my electric spectra pump. I will be doing a review on that in my breast pumping video that'll come out in April, but I started to use it a little bit this last week. Um, like I said, right after my morning feed, that's going to signal to your body to make more milk and is going to keep your supply up. And then you can start to stash away that milk that you collect at that pumping time for when you're away from the house and you're not able to nurse or if your baby is going to daycare once you go back to work at the end of your maternity leave. One thing I did want to mention in regards to pumping with the electric pump one hour after your morning feed is you just need to be um, a little bit careful with oversupply. Now, something that I'm going to start experimenting with now that I've reached four weeks, which they actually do not recommend that you use an electric pump until four to six weeks so that your breast milk supply can regulate on its own. But again, because I was struggling with um, an undersupply, I wasn't making enough milk during that fourth week, I did start to incorporate this morning pump to help boost my supply, which has very successfully helped me to boost my supply. Now that we are going into week five, I'm going to start to incorporate um, a little bit more pumping just because I do need to build a really decent stash for when I go back to work at eight weeks because he will be bottle fed during the day while I'm away because I work 30 minutes away from where daycare is located. Um, he will just have breast milk bags during the day and I will pump at work when he would typically nurse during the day at home. Um, I do want to get a decent supply built up, but again, I will be covering that in my breast pumping video. Again, I do just want to stress that you need to be careful when you start to incorporate pumping with nursing because it can create an oversupply and that sounds like a good thing, but it is not. This can lead to things like um, engorgement and mastitis, which are both really not fun things. I've had engorgement before, um, I've not experienced mastitis, but from what I have heard and seen, it's definitely not something that I want to experience. So just be careful of that. Again, I'm not a medical professional. This is just what I have done to help myself um, boost my supply back up after that third week drop. Another quick little thing that I wanted to mention or a quick little product that I wanted to mention in regards to my breastfeeding journey this far, I was actually sent these in the mail for me to try out um, and I ended up really liking them so that's why I'm sharing them with you guys. Um, they sent me, um, the company is Cradle Plus and they ended up sending me um, nipple shields along with like milk catchers, so like a breast shell. Um, I've really liked I've really liked using the um, cups inside of my bra during the day around the house when um, I'm typically using like a breast pad. So this is going to catch any milk um, that may be leaking. Now I've found personally that I don't really leak a ton unless I'm getting really close to a feeding time um, and then I can feel this like really crazy pins and needle feeling um, and then that tells me that I'm going to start leaking. But when I have these guys in, um, I don't worry about it as much. It just gives me a little bit of extra time before um, I need to go and wake him up. So say I start leaking like an hour and a half and he um, isn't quite ready to wake up yet. I, um, I've i really liked that these give me the ability to wait the extra 30 minutes before I have to wake him up for a nap from a nap and this will catch anything that's leaking. So I typically don't get like a ton, maybe like a quarter of an ounce on each breast. I have very large breasts, so I like to use these in a padded bra, that's what's worked best for me. So I have yet to use the nipple shields, but I will say that these feel really nice. These are great quality compared to um, what I used in the past with my 
daughter. Um, the other ones were like not as sticky and they were like not as bendy, but I really like the silicone on these. So if you're suffering from like a cracked and bleeding nipple and you just need a little bit of a break, um, these are really great. Again, make sure that you check with your doctor or your lactation consultant before using a nipple shield um, just because there can be some nipple confusion there not a medical professional but that is what my lactation consultant has told me it's only to use a nipple shield in like extreme situations or if you just need to um, give your nipple a little bit of a break if it's blistered or cracked and bleeding etc nipple shields are really good at helping in that area um, but again this product in general i really like um, the quality of their nipple shields although i haven't had to use them yet i will be very glad that i have them when i do need them um, another product i wanted to mention in regards to like if you're having like pain painful nipples um, in addition to using possibly a nipple shield um, and using a nipple butter. So these are the Lansno Soothies gel pads. I've actually not needed to use them this time, which is insane. I feel like my breasts in general did a much better job at adjusting to nursing this time around. So um, I really didn't find that I needed to use these this time. But um, if you are experiencing super sore nipples, this does wonders. All right, so now I'm gonna get into the Q&A part of this video. Again, I asked you guys on Instagram um, if you had any breastfeeding questions for me. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna answer these right now from my Instagram story. Um, the first one is, um, you know what, I'm just gonna skip the usernames um, just because I'm more than likely going to butcher them. But thank you to each and every single one of you that asked me a question. And it makes me so happy when I see you guys engaging with me and then giving me feedback. I love that. So thanks guys. All right, so first question is how do you increase your milk supply if you know? I'm one struggling mama. I'm so sorry, mama. I know how you feel. Week three was a lot of tears for me. And like I mentioned um, earlier in this video, there are several things that I did to increase that my milk supply. Um, the best ones I would say is increasing your water, increasing your oats, start drinking some of that like lactation tea or mother's milk tea. And then if you're comfortable with it, um, start incorporating a um, pumping session right after um, your morning feed because that's when your milk supply is going to be the highest. Okay, so the next question is, do you reuse the Hakka after rinsing it or do you just reuse it and not rinse it? Love your vids. Aw, thank you. Well, yes, I do rinse it after I am done. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I, I do wash it every single time with a um, very gentle like bottle soap if I can or like a more natural soap like a Mrs. Meyers. Um, next question is, is it painful? Breastfeeding can be very painful, yes, um, and it takes a lot of time and dedication, but um, the bonding experience and knowing that your body is providing your baby with everything that he or she needs is amazing. I highly recommend that you guys do um, research on breastfeeding. But there is a reason why I'm trying to breastfeed for longer this time and keep my supply up. That's because I learned about all this really cool like science stuff behind breastfeeding. It will literally blow your mind. Again, fat is best. There's no mom shaming here. I'm just so intrigued by breastfeeding and all the science behind it, which is why I am breastfeeding and I'm going to try and breastfeed as long as I possibly can this time. But yes, it's painful. It takes a lot of dedication. And sometimes I just want a glass of wine and I can't when I'm breastfeeding. It's kind of like your fourth trimester, if you will. <laughs> to help with the pain, I will um, use things like ice packs and um, heat pads. I don't really use a ton of like breastfeeding products, you guys. My nipples don't get cracked um, and they don't bleed, but the past couple days they've been a little sore. So I've been using the Mother Love nipple cream that I introduced in the beginning of breastfeeding. I feel like they have just like gotten used to breastfeeding, I don't know. But in the beginning, yes, I did use a nipple cream. Um, I will have that linked down below. I have that linked in many of my other videos as well, and I swear by it. It's great, it's natural, it's fine for your baby, and is just a really soothing product, and I really love it. Um, next question is, was it weird the first time you ever breastfed? Like, did it feel weird? Okay, so um, thank you for this question. This is a really, um, 
This is a really good question. All right, how do I make this answer as like not weird as possible? Breasts I feel like have been so sexualized that even for me, it was really weird when I first started breastfeeding my daughter to get over the weirdness factor. Really quickly, it faded. Um, I thought it would be an issue. It really was a non-issue. I just loved breastfeeding so much. There's like a weird like pride and satisfaction when you can see how much you're pumping and you can see that your baby is milk drunk and so full that your body has provided your baby with all of the nutrients that he or she needs. It's just like this really weird pride factor. So no, it wasn't weird. No, it doesn't feel weird. It doesn't feel weird. It's not painful. It's just like a tugging sensation. And really it's just the best bonding time with your little one. I know I've said that a million times, but um, no, you don't feel weird. I personally haven't felt weird anyways. Maybe other mamas out there do feel weird when they breastfeed, um, but I personally have not. Next question is any tricks for getting him to open wide or how to help with the nipple soreness at the beginning? This is another really good question. Um, getting them to open wide. <laughs> My baby is like a little bird. He's like a shark. He will, when he is hungry and he feels anything at his cheeks, he will literally open his mouth super wide and he will shake back and forth and back and forth. Anything that he thinks is a, a nipple, he's like a little shark. So my son has done a really good job of like latching from the beginning and opening really wide. But the best advice that I have found is to line your nipple up with their nose and, and then to come directly down and to point your nipple at the um, roof of their mouth and to get as much of the nipple and areola into their mouth as possible. The more tissue, the better the latch. Again, not a professional. This is just the advice that I've directly taken from my lactation consultant. Um, next question is any scabs. How do you how do you treat them if you get any? I'm struggling. So I again highly recommend that nipple butter and just making sure that you're applying that after every single feeding. If you have more sensitive nipples, um, make sure that you're applying that nipple butter after every feeding. I find that the more that I would use it, especially in the beginning, it would really help with the soreness. And then after a while, um, my nipples just kind of got used to the breastfeeding. All right, um, next one is not a breastfeeding question, but I love your videos. Well, thank you, that is super sweet. Um, okay, so next one after that is, um, how do you keep your supply up? So again, another supply question, and I answered that um, back a couple questions ago. All right, so the last question is, how long does he usually nurse for and how quick is he gaining weight? Asking that because I found such a variance of things online and those are my concerns. Okay, so of course this is going to vary from person to person, baby to baby, and you should really check with your doctor and maybe check in with a lactation group. Um, and the reason why I say check in with a lactation group is because um, one of the lactation consultants at the hospital I gave birth at here um, said that these lactation groups, you can go there, weigh your baby, feed your baby, and then you can weigh them afterwards to see exactly how much um, they are consuming, how much milk that they're drinking with each feeding. Personally, I um, have not done that. I have not joined the breastfeeding group. I just have been following. So his two-week appointment, like I said, he was up to nine pounds, four ounces, so a really decently, so a really decent sized baby. And then now, um, two weeks later, when I weighed him again on the food scale, which wasn't exact, he was like almost. 12 pounds, like between 11 and 12 pounds. I was kind of holding him, so I was holding some of his weight, but I would not be surprised if he was like about 11 and a half-ish pounds. So I haven't had any concerns with weight gain as of yet, and he looks to me like he's chunking up quite nicely. But if you do have any concerns, I highly suggest you reach out to your pediatrician or to a lactation nurse, lactation consultant, or your midwife if you used a midwife. Just reach out to any sort of medical professional. Um, I personally haven't dealt with this. I haven't felt like he's not getting enough milk. He will nurse anywhere from like 10 minutes on a breast to 30 minutes on a breast. Um, I let him control the feeding. I can tell when he is really full because he gets that milk drunk face and gets a little bit of milk down his mouth and I can tell that I'm producing enough. That is what I've personally done to ease my mind on the weight gain issue. Um, I hope that answered your question a little bit, um, but if you have any real concerns, make sure that you reach out 
to one of those medical professionals and see what they have to say. All right, you guys, that is going to wrap up my breastfeeding video. It was a long one. I think I've been sitting here for like two hours recording and re-recording and trying to word things the best way that I can. And my dog is broken. I hope I answered all of you guys' questions. If you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I will do my best to answer your questions. I'm not, again, not a medical professional. This is not medical advice in any way. This is just tips and tricks that I have found to be useful within my first month of breastfeeding. This is how I survived it, you guys. This is how I've made it this far. And I know it doesn't like seem like I've gotten very far in my journey, but to me, this is a good milestone. We made it the first month, pretty much exclusively breastfeeding, and I'm pretty proud of that. Again, if you guys are not subscribed to my channel, I would really love if you join my little family here on YouTube. What is going on with this dog? If you like this kind of video on my channel, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Again, leave a comment down below with your breastfeeding advice or your tips and tricks that worked for you, or if you have any questions, leave them down there. I'm sure either myself or some of the mamas in this little community that we have here can help you out. Again, thanks for tuning into today's video, and I will see you guys on Friday for a really fun video. Okay, bye guys. What a wonderful world.